Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week with some transport news, it seems everyone and their mother are releasing electric vehicles right now, and here's an unusual one that caught my eye. The Moto Compacto by Honda is the spiritual successor to their classic Moto Compo mini motorbike and is basically a unique looking foldable electric scooter. It seems to be marketed at vacations, campus travel and city travel, though I don't know how safe it'd feel in high traffic areas. It weighs just over 40 pounds, has a max speed of 15 miles per hour and a fairly small range of 12 miles. Prices start from just under $1,000. The Japan Mobility Show was held a couple of weeks ago too and there was no shortage of interesting concepts and lots of electric vehicles on display. Now that we have these different motor and manufacturing systems, I hope car makers get a bit bolder in car design for the future and get past this boring phase we seem to be in. Elsewhere in Japan, General Motors, Honda and Cruise announced a partnership to bring a self-driving robo-taxi service to central Tokyo by 2026. The three companies aim to establish a new company in the first half of next year, pending regulatory approvals, and they will be using the steering wheel-less Cruise Origin cars for journeys. Moving over to AI news, and Runway ML's Gen 2 video generator got some new updates recently to significantly improve the fidelity and consistency of video results. They've added a director mode and increased the maximum length of generated clips to 18 seconds. The maximum resolution for videos is also now 2816 by 1536 pixels too. It's crazy to think how all this generative AI stuff has exploded over the past couple of years and the continued rate of improvement is something to behold. In similar news, Stability AI announced a private preview of Stable 3D, their new tool which allows anyone to create draft quality textured 3D objects in minutes by using reference images or text prompts. The 3D designs are automatically created as .obj files and can be imported directly into 3D editing tools for further improvement or into game engines like Unreal or Unity. It's currently available through a private preview and you need to contact Stability for access. Over in virtual and augmented reality news, and at last month's MetaConnect 2023 keynote speech, Mark Zuckerberg mentioned something interesting. This NBA season it's possible for US viewers to watch 52 games for free, as well as NASCAR, and MMA bouts on UFC Fight Pass. These events have 180 degree cameras, so with a VR headset, it apparently feels like you're sitting right next to the action. I think this is another trend that's likely to pick up steam in the next few years. In headset news, Xreal announced the Air Series 2 mixed reality glasses a couple weeks ago. These glasses are apparently the first in the world to use Sony's latest 0.55 inch micro OLEDs with 1080p resolution for each eye. The design is thinner and lighter than the previous model, though we're still not at realistic sunglasses replacement size yet. One really interesting feature on the Pro version of these is the ability to go from transparent augmented reality mode to an opaque virtual reality mode. In other electronics news, and the latest Xiaomi Watch H1 was released in China recently, and one feature worth noting is a blood pressure pump that apparently rivals medical grade systems. No idea about its effectiveness, but I thought it was interesting to see more health and medical systems working their way directly into consumer electronics. Over in manufacturing and researchers at MIT have developed Fibrobo, a body temperature morphing fiber. When its temperature reaches a certain point it changes its shape. Based on liquid crystal elastomers, this fiber, once knitted into a textile form, enables interesting new applications like medical compression shirts and self-ventilating athletic wear. A team at the University of British Columbia, working alongside researchers at Honda, have developed a new soft robot skin that can be attached to prosthetics or other robots to enable touch sensitivity and dexterity. The sensors, made mostly from silicone rubber, use weak electric fields to sense objects and their flexibility allows them to detect forces along its surfaces. This paves the way for cheap and easily manufacturable sensors which allow robot arms to successfully hold fragile objects like an egg or glass of water without breaking them. In other robotics news, Amazon has begun testing Agility Robotics Digit Humanoid Robot which we have covered previously. Initial trials will be carried out at Amazon's research and development facility where it will be completing tasks such as picking up and moving empty totes once inventory has been exhausted, something that they say the workers find very repetitive. Amazon definitely understand logistics automation better than most and I'm curious what comes of these tests. Researchers at the University of Technology Sydney have been investigating the use of acoustic touch to assist those with sight loss. The team developed smart glasses which sense the environment and automatically converts objects it sees into different sounds. For example, a mobile phone would be a buzzing noise and a plant would sound like rustling leaves. 
In their evaluation study, they found that the device can effectively aid with recognition and reaching for objects without significantly affecting cognitive workload of the users, and they believe these type of wearables could become a useful method of sensory augmentation. And ending this week with a really interesting video of how a general purpose home robot is helping a man who is quadriplegic and mute. Henry Evans, who has been paralysed from the neck down since 2002, shared his story of how he uses the stretch robot from Hello Robot to regain a bit of his personal autonomy. Using an eye tracking system and a web browser, Henry can control the robot to carry out tasks like feeding himself, scratching his head, playing games with his family and generally interacting with his granddaughter. Amazing, right? Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.